Ever wonder why seemingly the moment you hit your 30s, your body doesn't respond to the same diet you've always eaten? Losing weight becomes a little bit harder every time the calendar flips to a new year. No matter how hard you try to eat less and move more. The worst part is you're always hungry and you seemingly have these insatiable cravings that's almost impossible to turn off. That is exactly what happened to my coaching client, Ange. She had no problem staying lean in her 20s, even though she worked at a restaurant surrounded by delicious food. But the moment she got into her 30s after having two kids, she started to notice the scale moving the wrong way. Every year, she was a couple of pounds heavier. It didn't matter that she was eating healthy and did cardio five days a week. This puzzling pattern persisted for a few years, and when she got into her late 30s, she was the heaviest she's ever been. Her clothes didn't fit her properly anymore, even though she was barely eating anything at this point. She started to feel hopeless. She thought she was doomed. She didn't feel good about herself, which started to affect her confidence. She did not like the person she saw in the mirror until she found out that she actually needed to eat more of certain foods and adjust her exercise routine to overcome this seemingly inevitable weight gain that happens to most people once they hit 30. After trying almost everything with little degree of success, she finally made this seemingly counterintuitive dietary and exercise switch. To her surprise, she finally started losing weight again. And if you're also wondering why losing weight has become infinitely harder after you turn 30 even though you're dieting and working out harder than ever, you might think there's something wrong with your body. But I'm here to tell you that you can lose weight just like how Ange did. But before I reveal this counterintuitive dietary and exercise switch, you need to understand what doesn't work and why. The answer isn't to diet and exercise even harder to lose weight because that was the exact predicament Ange found herself in. She got to a point where she was barely eating a thousand calories, she was spending hours at the gym every week, and she was still not losing weight. She was not getting a good return on her investment, which made her even more frustrated. Not to mention she was always tired and hungry all the time. Sound familiar? That is exactly what happens to studies done on the Biggest Loser contestants. If you're not familiar with the show, they take the contestants through a rigorous diet and exercise routine. And everything is great. They lose weight while they're on the show. Which is really typical of any diet as long as you're on a calorie deficit. Mind you, they're absolutely miserable while they're doing it. But here's the ugly truth. After they're done the show, they eventually put all the weight back on they lost and then some. Some of the contestants now weigh more than they did before they joined the show. So following the conventional eat less and move more strategy clearly doesn't work long term. And if you don't know what you're doing once you hit 30, you become part of a couple of not so good statistics. According to this review, the average North American puts on an average of 1 to 2 pounds per year starting from the age of 25 to 55. That's exactly what was happening to Ange. She was gaining a couple of pounds every year. Her regular clothes were starting to fit tighter. Her relaxed jeans are now her skinny jeans. According to this paper, the average person also loses 3-8% to of lean muscle per decade after age 30. That's because the human body naturally goes through something called anabolic resistance. And if you don't know what you're doing to overcome this anabolic resistance, as you age, it'll eventually lead to sarcopenia. It's the decline of skeletal muscle tissue as you age. It's one of the most important causes of functional decline and loss of independence for older adults. Unfortunately, sarcopenia is synonymous with aging. That's how a lot of elderly people end up in nursing homes because they can't take care of themselves anymore. And most people think sarcopenia is a disease of aging. Nope, it starts in your 30s. Ange, through no fault of her own, was going through anabolic resistance when she hit 30. Now, why does this loss of muscle mass matter? Put simply, the quality of your life is a direct correlation to your muscle health. Muscle is the mechanism of health. It's kind of like money. It makes everything better. It's your metabolic currency because muscle is a very energy expensive tissue to build and maintain. So unless you're intentionally taking the proper action to protect your muscles, your body will naturally need fewer calories as you age from anabolic resistance because you're steadily losing muscle every year. That makes weight gain almost inevitable when you get into your 30s if you don't make the necessary lifestyle adjustments. That is the exact situation and found herself in with no answer in sight. 
and she thought she was doing everything right. That was the most frustrating part for her. Because when we're younger, we're largely driven by hormones. When Ange was in her teens and early 20s, she could eat whatever she wanted. That's how she was able to get away with working at a restaurant. Weight loss wasn't really an issue. But again, when she got into her 30s, her body started to change. Ange, wanting to put a stop to her frustrating weight gain, finally came to me for help. And if you want me to coach you as well, you can book a free consultation to my Fat Loss Accelerator VIP program by clicking on the link at the top right hand corner or in the description below. The first thing we did was to make sure she was getting high quality and adequate protein for every meal to make sure that her body had all the raw materials it needed to maintain her muscle. By high quality protein, I'm talking about protein from animals and animal products like beef, pork, fish, and eggs because it has the most abundant and bioavailable nutrients. When it comes to taking care of her muscles specifically, animal protein contains all the essential amino acids to trigger something called muscle protein synthesis. Muscle protein synthesis is the process of building and maintaining muscle. Ange learned that she's actually eating protein for the essential amino acids, specifically leucine. She needed to hit 2.6 grams of leucine, which is around 30 grams of animal protein, to trigger muscle protein synthesis. She started tracking her food and she landed with 5 ounces of beef per meal to meet her protein requirement for health. This all-important protein component was the missing link in Ange's diet. She was definitely not hitting those numbers, like not even close. Because of all the bad and confusing information on the internet, she was barely eating any protein to overcome her anabolic resistance. So every year she was losing muscle and gaining fat at the same time. The worst combination. That's why eating adequate and high quality protein per meal should be the centerpiece of any diet worth its salt. That's how you give your body all the raw materials to build and maintain muscle. Because the more muscle you have, the more calories you burn at rest. That's how you become a fat burning machine. And just like water, if your body doesn't get enough protein, it's just gonna go for short term survival. It won't function optimally. Protein is also the most satiating macronutrient, like think about a nice piece of ribeye steak or bacon and eggs. It's the proverbial off switch to your cravings. Research back up this strategy. This study shows that increasing daily protein intake from 15% to 30% resulted in 440 calories less consumed per day, which led to an average weight loss of 11 pounds in 12 weeks just by eating more protein. Things were finally starting to come together for Ange. The second thing we did was to focus on the right types of workouts. This sounded counterintuitive for Ange at first, but what she was doing for exercise wasn't working, so why not try something else? I told her that she had to slow down to speed up. Her excessive cardio workouts were actually causing her body to become catabolic. Catabolic means to break down muscle. It was stressing out her body too much, which then caused insatiable cravings afterwards. She was ravenous. And she was doing her cardio workouts to burn calories. Going back to the studies done on the Biggest Loser contestants, that strategy does not work long term. Instead, we shifted and started focusing on resistance training because resistance training is the only type of exercise that sends the strongest signal to her body to build muscle. I told her, if you want to be a healthy and happy human being, there is literally nothing better you can do than to become as physically strong as humanly possible. Resistance training is the only way to do that. This is how you get that tight and toned look. So we started with bodyweight movements to ease her way into it. Instead of going to her cardio class every day, we slowed it down to just two to three resistance training based workouts for a grand total of 60 minutes per week. Basically the same amount of time as one episode of her favorite Netflix show, which is a far cry from her regular five days a week routine. Less but better now became the mantra. We used some of her freed up time to go for regular walks, which actually gave her more energy afterwards. She felt energized from her walks instead of being completely exhausted and ravenous afterwards from her overly strenuous cardio workouts. When Ange started to prioritize protein and focus on less but better workouts, her fat burning metabolism came alive. She started to have more energy. Her insatiable cravings have all but disappeared. And after years of struggling, she was finally losing weight again while eating more food. And after just 12 weeks, she went from 156.7 pounds to 134.2 pounds. That's 22 and a half pounds if you want the math. 
14.4% of her body weight was gone. She lost 5 inches from her waist, going from 31.5 inches to 26.5 inches, and she lost 14 inches off her body overall. One of Angie's main goals when she joined the Fat Loss Accelerator VIP was to get her pre-baby body back. She did just that. In her words, I feel like a different person. I definitely need to go shopping and buy some new clothes. I tried on a pair of pants that used to be tight on me and they literally fell off without me unbuttoning them. Here's the cool part. Three months after her initial 12-week transformation, she sent me this text. Remember those skinny jeans I was telling you about that were really, really tight? Well, I just bought a new pair and instead of a size 10, I'm now a size 4 and it's not even skin tight. Staying steady at 129 pounds, I feel like my body is happy at this weight. It feels good and I feel strong. That means she lost even more body fat. She went from 156 pounds to 134 pounds. Three months later, she dropped five more pounds of fat and feels better than ever. And while prioritizing adequate and high quality protein should be the centerpiece of your diet, as shown by Angie's incredible weight loss transformation, there are two other macronutrient levers to consider in the form of carbs and fat. Best believe they could either support your weight loss progress or hinder it. If you want to know what types of carbs and fat to eat and how much of it to complete your overall diet picture, you have two options. First, if you just want my help when it comes to providing you a shortcut through all the trial and error, tap into over a decade of my coaching experience helping hundreds of people just like Ange achieve their fat loss goals, you can book a free consultation to join my Fat Loss Accelerator VIP program by clicking the link at the top right hand corner or in the description and comments below. You can also check out this video where I do a deep dive all about carbs. Are they bad for you? Are they antithetical to health? Or are they good for you? As with a lot of things, quality is everything. Not all carbs are created equal. So I'm going to clear out all the confusion in this video. And always remember, it's not about the weight you lose, it's about the life you gain.